Welcome. This is the Seek Coach podcast, a podcast exploring the Seek principles and how to live them in the 21st century. This is episode 6, Seek Your Mind, a mental health awareness week special. Welcome everybody. This is Avtar Singh, the Seek Coach. Welcome to episode 6. I'm wishing you and your families are keeping well. This episode, we are fortunate enough to have two members of an amazing UK-based charity called Seek Your Mind, who look at raising awareness around mental health and provide support services, particularly to the Sikh Punjabi community in the UK. We welcome today Gobindajit Kaur, who is the founder of the charity and currently works as a clinical psychologist for the NHS, and Rakhvir Singh, who is a volunteer who brings with him lived experience of dealing with mental health challenges. Both explain more about their backgrounds and the charity during the episode. Mental health is such an important topic, and particularly for the Sikh Punjabi community, as we don't always openly talk about these things. So one of the good things is there is a lot of organisations now, like Seek Your Mind, who are coming up and discussing and raising awareness of these. So it, it is very important for us as a community to help them have these conversations, to raise awareness of the information and the support that is readily available to people who might be facing mental health issues. We have a number of these resources in the episode description, so do take a look at that and do share with your friends and families to make them aware of this. I do hope you enjoy the episode. And if there's any feedback, as always, you can contact me on Instagram at the Seek Coach or the email address the Seek Coach at gmail.com. Stay blessed. Why good jika khalsa? Why good jiki fate? Why jika khalsa? Why good jiki fate? So um, I want to give a warm welcome to Govinda Jeet Kaur and Rakhir Singh, who are from the organization Seek Your Mind. Uh, thank you for coming on the Seek Coach podcast. You're very welcome. And it's amazing listening to and, and seeing the work that you're doing around mental health. Um, I think it'd be great for you to give a bit, brief introduction about yourself so that the listeners and the viewers can understand so your backgrounds and your involvement in the, the organization you're from. Do you want to go first, Kovindajit? Sure. Um, yeah. So I am a, a clinical psychologist um, and I work in the NHS. Um, and I, uh, well, I say I found it. I didn't. My husband actually had the idea. Um, and then I begrudgingly said, OK, then it probably is necessary. <laughs> um, and essentially, he was saying, use your skills, use your skills to help the community. Um, and, and it all started in around 2015 um, from an Instagram post. That's how it all started. But the aim, I suppose, of, of um, Seek Your Mind, and, and it is slowly changing and developing, but the aim was really to raise awareness to, um, because essentially I, I work in an area of Birmingham that's really diverse um, and, you know, it's got lots of um, a Sikh population is quite big. And, and I wasn't seeing anyone in the service I worked in, which is an adult service. And, and I thought, well, what's happening? Where are they? Uh, is it that we, we just don't experience mental health issues? Is it that they're going somewhere else? Um, and so we started this. Um, and, and actually, you know, have answered quite a few of those questions, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. But but essentially, we, we do need to um, to think about mental health in our community. And, and it's quite critical um, f for me and, and I, I think members of the team really to think about Sikhs as as a community in itself, because uh, we often talk about South Asians and, and that, that group is massive absolutely huge it's from Sri Lanka to Pakistan to you know like it inc incorporates so many populations with so many differences um, and so seek your mind was it is particularly for the Sikh community because we think about Sikhi as, as the faith as well as mental health and psychology um, but we have had um, contacts and, and people requiring support from different faiths and different communities and we will never say no so i suppose it's the overarching aim of seek your mind is to support people with their mental health great and you're increasing Lindsay, um well i'd say queen from a said um i um i joined seek your mind uh, about a year ago or so um just under that um and um i didn't have much knowledge or experience of mental health uh, but um, I came in because I had a mental health um, experience with my family 
Um, and I found that Seek Your Mind was an organization where I could, you know, get in listening ear and get more knowledge and, and experience of mental health. Uh, but uh, I work as a buyer, so I'm not connected in the mental health field at all. Um, but I think, as even as you said, there's a, a massive need for uh, a community, particularly the Punjabi Sikh community, uh, to be more aware of mental health issues um, and for us to open up this discussion um, and obviously, you know, uh, create um, an opportunity for people to approach us and also uh, so we can help them um, access the services that they need uh, within the NHS. It's, it's a definite need for it because there seems to be um, a, like you said in the, in the Sikh community and Punjabi community, you know, a lot of people don't talk about mental health, a lot of people don't actually recognise what mental health is. Um, so what sort of services and support does their organisation um, deliver? Um, so, so when we began this journey, it was all absolutely like, like you say about mental health uh, awareness raising and, and slowly, um, while that is still key, um, it's also about thinking about, you know, people people do need that information but it might not be that they don't know it it just might be what do they do with it once they know it so once you know that I'm not quite feeling right what do you do with, with that and so a big part of our role has been about supporting people to access as Rakhvi said access support services out there so um, we you know we, we we offer telephone consultations for free um, so everything we do is free it's all voluntary and, and no one gets paid in any way shape or form um, and so when, when people email us in and, and they email us via the, the website, um, they just, you know, write briefly about what, what kind of support they're looking for or what's going on with them. And so we often offer a telephone call, one or, or more, depending on their need, um, to think about like a, making sense of, of what's happening. Um, because a lot of people, you know, you can see in the here and now that I feel quite low, um, my appetite reduced or I'm not getting on with people and I'm isolated. But we, we don't always see like why the why really and so we um we try and help them think about why you're not born like this you're not born feeling quite low in mood or anxious or anything else and so we try and help people make sense of it um and then if they want to because actually not always um you know people don't always want to do something with that that is enough for now um we, we kind of signpost to um therapists psychologists um counselors or even kind of um community support services like you know you know get engaging in your community doing things in a group um, that might help so we try and so post in that way um, we've also um, recently we're undertaking some research so um, we've got quite a, a big database of information now from all the, the people that we supported and so we're looking into um, you know how we can we can get that out really in an obviously an anonymous way but and, and also in, in kind of um, academic journals and the reason for that is um, is that there isn't a lot of information in healthcare, in, in um, academia about Sikhs. Uh, it's about South Asians and, mm -hmm. and, and that, that's fine. Um, but we know that Sikhs are different. I mean, we, we have different needs and, and that needs to be recognized. Um, so we've got some kind of involvement in that and we hope to kind of continue with that really. The more people that we get on board who are interested in doing this kind of work um, we also have done drop-in clinics, Gordware community centers, um, to uh, really just I mean, a couple of it was in Coventry that we did quite a regular one but we've done a few in Birmingham as well just to, to um, share with the Sangat that we're here uh, this is what we do and and um, we, we've even kind of gone on stage in the Ra side to talk about like anxiety and, and for me that was one of the pivotal moments because it was quite an elderly Sangat and and you know I think I was talking about anxiety and I was talking about like why that might happen and what it might look like and something that could help you um, and there were so many nods there were so many oh yeah and then afterwards uh, a few people approached um, and they didn't want anything more but a leaflet and that's all they wanted. And I, and I think that's, you know, for me, that was so key because actually these people, um, you know, probably don't want to access services for whatever reason. Um, they probably don't want to have like maybe long-term support. Again, we're not sure why. We can hazard a guess, but we don't know for, for definite. But what they do suffer with is, is anxiety, is mental health issues, because the reality is that every single one of us will, will experience a mental health issue at some point in our lives. The, the level, the, um, you know, the, the kind of uh, how long it goes on for, or, um, um, how stressful it is for us that differs but we will you know life is hard 
and that's that's essentially I think what we all know but maybe we don't always think about life is hard um, and and you know everybody needs a bit of support from time to part time so I suppose we, we, what we offer always just changes depending on what kind of um, new members that we have in the team, depending on our capacity as, as clinicians, as sevadars. Um, but at the moment, it's about supporting people who reach out, whether that's on Instagram, Facebook or emails. Um, and, and recently, actually, we have offered some training to a clinical psychology doctorate course in Staffordshire. Um, and that was around what the work we're doing because it just highlights that every community is different um and it also highlights to um trainee clinical psychologists and hopefully other professionals that when we when we speak with people from a different religion different culture different background to us we really need to think about their experiences and we really need to ask certain questions mm -hmm. um, and so that's been key and i think hopefully we'll grow and, and maybe offer that out to other courses um, so that we can just share, I suppose, what we're doing and hopefully other people will, you know, do similar. That's brilliant. So some of the, um, I guess, the academic and the, the, the data that you're gathering around real cases, um, is there any themes coming out of that, like that we, <clears throat> we need to raise more awareness in our community about telling them that this is coming from our community and to the wider world to say, you know, I mean, we can we can make we can make um, obvious statements because we we've experienced the community and the, the pressure that you know we kind of give ourselves or other people give. But was there any any key themes that came out of that data in academia? Um, but, you know, I suppose the biggest it's not particularly a theme. Well, I will go on to that. But the, the biggest thing for me, and I think one of the questions that we get asked is is around exactly what you've, you've asked. But um, it's that every single diagnosis. I mean, I don't particularly like talking about diagnoses, but if we think about them like that, um, every single one of them we have been asked about um, because someone in the Sikh community is experiencing something that ranges from depression to psychosis to bipolar disorder all of them. Um, the common themes, however, within that, and, and this again is a cross diagnosis, it's transdiagnostic, is relationships. Relationships are hard, whether that's the um, in-laws or uh, whether a partner or um, at work, all of this um, has a massive impact on how we feel and, and whether we are diagnosed with depression or psychosis or whatever. So um, I don't know if it's any different really to any other population and, and working in the NHS, I would say no, it isn't. Um, I think there's nuances though. So for example, um, if we think about the diagnosis of obsessive compulsive disorder, I think there's something that I've noticed that I am quite curious about, uh, about that presentation in Amritsari Sikhs um, and this kind of idea of intrusive thoughts, of thoughts that we don't want, particularly maybe about God or what kind of person we are. These thoughts can come into our mind and, and it, we, we kind of think that that means that we're bad, we're bad, we're a bad Sikh. Yeah. So I've heard that probably more times than, than I would have um, guest I, I would hear at that so i think that needs um further kind of discussion really yes yeah, that's, that's an interesting um area actually because i think there is this thing around judgment um particularly into in, in, when it comes about religion probably twofold where you other people are probably judging you and what you should be doing and or should not be doing but there's a bigger internal judgment thinking that you're not good enough or you know you're not worthy of certain things or you know of yeah it's that it, it's that internal conversation is dangerous but then you know the external pressure is external pressure but yeah the, i can imagine that because i've experienced that myself but i've experienced quite a few other of my friends and network that, that i've seen that pressure and even people who are who say they're not not practicing um they feel the pressure that they say we're not good you know and it's like Wow, that's like that's not the concept that was there. It was about humanity, it was about equality, it was about you know everyone has their own journey. But you can see that there's there's that level of pressure, um, even even when it becomes practicing your faith as well. Um, so yeah, you can imagine like the, the different cases and the people you get to speak and all the, the sort of different types of um, issues you get. So I guess um, one of the key things I read about the team that you have. I mean, you, you obviously alluded to already that you have clinicians, but you would have also have people with lived experience. You, know, you have a three thing who is a prime example of how somebody who's had that lived experience and, and you're sharing that. 
um, I guess to give other people that personal resonance that you know you've been through this yourself and how you sort of saw through it. So could you give us a bit of insight into that and your experience of um, sort of mental health issues? Yeah, um, sure. I um, well, my um, uh, younger brother was diagnosed with the clinical depression early last year, um, and I think it was something that was building. Um, he was showing symptoms. Um, nearer the time of being diagnosed of, you know, having, um, you know, feeling low and uh, irritable and having disturbed sleep, having aches and pains, um, and just having general disinterest in life and, you know, normal things that people, you know, do and enjoy. Um, and he's having, as you said, say, relationship um, issues, I think, um, because he was a, <coughs> um, a dad of a second, uh, a newborn as well at that time, a new baby boy. So um, it was supposed to be like a happy time, really. Yeah. Um, and nobody really understood what was happening with him and why he was acting the way he was. Um, and um, being close family, we didn't recognize that these symptoms are adding up to something else. And that is depression. When he was diagnosed, then we were all like, wow. Um, and he was seeking therapy. Um, but he, he just thought it was, um, you know, not going to be for him and he just thought that he needed to get out and he decided to take his life last july um which was really sad and um you know very uh, heartbreaking time for everybody really if somebody passes away in your family um and then you know i began thinking like what is this this monster which has come into our family and attacked one of uh, my my family and we don't even know about it there's no weapons we can actually use to find mental illness it has to be like a, it's an internal struggle um but it's not a thing which can't can't be overcome um and you know i've experienced with other your other brother who has schizophrenia mild form of schizophrenia um so you know i'm, I'm always sort of you know trying to get, keep in touch with him and um trying to um so seek him out come really in 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 to help with this and especially with, with indigi so um, to seek uh, therapy and seek other like self-help groups and uh, telling him to look after himself and stay away from drugs and alcohol and stuff and so um, and he's slowly getting on demand um, so yeah that's uh, it's been a bit of a, a massive blow straight away because we don't have um, a history of mental illness um, as such that I've had experience with but recently it's uh, past year or so it's come to the fore it's knocked on my door and now it's just asked me what you're going to do about it. Um, and, you know, I, I decided to see, be proactive. It was, I had, a, as you, as you grieve, there is a process. And um, I went to um, support groups, just a society of bereavement by suicide. Um, they really helped um, because there's, there's people there who have experienced the same loss um, almost, you know, in the, in the recently. Um, and, uh, I did a course on, on uh, problems and awareness of mental health problems, um, and I completed that um, a month or so ago. So it's given me insight on a range of different mental health issues. Um, so I really thought to myself that, um, do I want to hurt? Do I want to ask these questions to um, eat me up? Do I just want to go and do I want to have a negative frame of thinking and just end up with an issue myself? You know, I mean, decision by myself, by myself from the Guruji's good bar that, you know, I'm going to be proactive, I'm going to learn, which we Sikhs we should do, um, and try and fight this, because um, it is a, a hidden enemy, um, it sneaks up on people um, without them actually, you know, knowing what it is, in a way, so, um, and I think it's echoing Govindaji, like, we need to get more awareness of mental issues in our community, because a lot more community, they don't they, they fear it as such as we don't need to talk about it or why is it important? It's almost like a taboo, taboo subject and there's a lot of stigma around people who have or are showing signs of mental illness or mental difficulty. Um, so, um, you know, that's why I want to, you know, obviously take a, more of a part in helping our community and not just myself and my family, um, but others who might, might need support. That's really good. So, I mean, I, th I think the good thing there is that you said, like yourself, we seek, so we need to continue learning and it's a proactivity around that. But I guess it's, it's, it's the difficultness when 
certain topics aren't discussable. We know people are saying it's taboo and it's not just, you know, it's your family or your relatives or the community as a whole, just sort of shying away from talking about the topic. So I guess um, trying to get this out through the existing network of gurdwaras and sort of community centers and networks we have, has that been an issue? I mean, you said you've already been able to speak on the stage of uh, the Gurdwara and commentary. Um, has that sort of, have you been welcomed into other Gurdwaras and how has that journey been? Is there, is there a general movement you find in that people are opening up to this conversation now? I think there absolutely is. Um, unfortunately, I think one of the turning points was somebody ending their life by suicide. Um, I believe there was a person in Canada and it was completely, it overthrew so many people. And I think that kind of spread then to the UK about this is obviously, it is happening. We, we might not know about it and we need to do something about it. And I think there's waves. So there's definitely been an increase in organisations um, similar to ourselves, uh, looking at like Punjabi Sikh communities, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I don't think there's ever been a time like this so we're in a really good place um what, what i've learned though is that whilst we have been able to get into some gordore um what it's really taken is that someone on the inside who's maybe part of the committee part of the sangha who can actually have a voice there it's taken that person to invite us in if um, we have approached many other gordore because i mean there's over 300 in the uk and and unfortunately um they haven't they haven't responded um, but we we seek your mind we are on uh, we are part of the seat council uk so okay. we hope that um you know and and you know that's that's like forward thinking on their part really to think about how mental health is quite a you know it needs to be talked about and how actually god they need to be a big part of the conversation yes. and so um we, you know we're, we're looking into some research about god and how they've helped people during the pandemic and we hope that actually um that will elicit what what they offer what mm -hmm. we can support them with and uh, what they need funding for potentially um because there's such a need for it so I think that the future is very bright in that sense and and it's really just about like motivation and effort really if we all work together to this um you know there's definitely things that we can all do yes i think the the infrastructure we have we're quite fortunate we have a lot of good ones. we have a lot of budgets that could potentially have a, a bit allocated to mental health and create a big impact and then like you said it's a, it's a struggle to try and justify the need for it but it's almost takes an extreme event or something but what well, i guess now i guess the the, the pandemic means the good are closed so they're diverting their efforts to giving say food to those who need it so i guess it's, it might be a good opportunity now to then so actually they have been closed but you could have been providing another service which is a mental health service so do you think part of the uh, the way to tackle it is then through digital the digital world because you're able to then reach um, many more people outside of just a building or a gurdwara uh, and how is that how effective are you finding at the moment I, i've seen there's like you said there's a lot of content a lot of accounts a lot of organizations that have been talking about mental health so i think the momentum is really building now that's really good so i guess for seek your mind what is the strategy for going forward in the future how do you what sort of targets do you have in mind or you know are you just letting it grow do you want to go, do you want to sort of disperse the team because it seems to be midlands focused face to face is that mm. gonna what's your plans around it really? well we're always open for more people we have got some um some team members in london um, and that's a combination of clinicians and, and then people with lived experience but i suppose what, what I, another thing that i've noticed is when people reach out to us because they want to be part of it that's that's much better than when we reach out to people um yes. because there's again most this is this is it's not easy work i wish it was in a way but actually on top of life on top of each individual team member's life and work and other commitments this is another thing and and sometimes it it, it might feel like that so it's really important that people are passionate about this um, I think in terms of our vision we're quite fluid but there are definitely some you know some bits that we want to work on and it's it's always been linking with other organizations um, because uh, what I didn't mention at the beginning was that uh, we didn't really want to make up a, an organization another one we don't want another organization because Sikh's so good at doing that the same organization <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not enough to work <laughs> yeah so um, but, uh, unfortunately we we'd um we had actually kind of um reached out to a few other kind of 
bigger organizations that were doing slightly different work but obviously mental health is part of every bit of work um and and, and we didn't get any responses so we we kind of begrudgingly set this up um and and we're, we're completely for working together and, and that's so crucial because we cannot do this alone and we profess to do this alone um and we, we want to think a bit more about like the culture and the religious and the faith aspect for individuals because that's the that's the bit that's that's different compared to you know a member of the public walking down the street who might not believe in anything kind of a higher being um so we we want to really kind of reach out to people and, and a kind of acknowledge that for psyche and psychology or psyche and mental health and psyche and the way our mind works they are they are not two different um kind of entities they're one and the same psyche actually incorporates everything yes. and you know we might talk and, and i think historically even i have thought very western psychology models over here and my beliefs and faith over here but but it, that's not the case and so one of our kind of aims is to just to if we can share some of that information and someone comes forward even one person comes forward and says can you help me or can you support me that, that brilliant that's excellent just you know one person and and that's for us that's really meaningful so we, we we're not um we're not um business minded at all um and that probably doesn't help some of the time because i think we need to be bigger in some ways because we want to help as many people as we can um but at the moment i think that's why we're quite focused on particular areas because we're mostly from birmingham and the west midlands and um, brookfield and leicester um so you know we are really looking into kind of widening what we offer and and one of those um kind of offerings would ideally be like kind of a a network of seek clinicians seek um individuals who are interested in mental health seek devadars who want to support kind of our vision really um so that we can always if we have like a call from someone and they're begging, sorry we've got someone we've got someone that they can speak to that's that's the ideal really um yeah and i think you would probably get a lot of interest from non-seeks as well to actually because it's this selfless service pillar that we we don't do it for you know identity or, or thanks and pat on the back it's completely you know it's 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 a it's part of who you are you, know, you're, you're, you are part of the community you're an upstanding person and you have a positive impact so i think the the the, the, the mission would resonate with so many people and i think when you talked about sikhi and gurbani i think the it, it's completely right i mean we have the most best self help tool in the world and you know i think it pains me when i think our own c community who have this are the one who's suffering in silence when we listen to it day in day out we we do all that but it doesn't it's not resonating within because the purpose is to make you resilient make you strong make you understand the bigger picture i mean you know goodbye talks about ups and downs and that that's normal that's life and mm. you know through our history so rich to show the trials and tribulations that the gurus and many gurusikh went through to to give us that prime example of you know it's not going to be easy actually it might be easy now because that time they had to go through a lot more hardship but yeah i think i think it, it's commendable because you're combining the two together and it's um it's probably explaining the the way that a clinician would explain but then reinforcing it with something that's much more deeper than that i think that will resonate with a lot of people um all right so th there was another question so yeah i think the other thing around you said about business minded so i'm obviously from the not for profit sector and i see charities you know having these services which are, which almost sound similar to what you're saying you, you're providing as well but they're able to then um, gather grants and you know funding from governments and i always think that as seek we're really good at getting a building fund and building like a massive expensive building mm. But when it comes to like coordinating our services which is for the betterment of our community and the wider community we're terrible at, at, and, and it's like you said the academic piece that you're doing will feed into that into the government to tell them actually look there's a there's a society of people here and there's a need for it but we, those needs aren't being matched because they just aren't coming forward or they're not aware of it so i think yeah i think i i had this thought in my mind about you know should you be money orientated but then if your business money orientated for the betterment of more other people then it's almost like a good thing isn't it because you're not using it for the, the lavish purpose of luxury but you're using it to exponentially help as many people i, I mentioned to a career last time is 
you know, I tend to go to Guru Gobind Singh Ji said, you know, I will, I will make one Sikh fight Savalak. That was in the time when we needed to fight Savalak. But now it's very important that one Sikh helps Savalak as a minimum, you know, and if not more. And if we yeah. all took that personal passion and did that, the world would be a very, very much better place to be in. And you know, I think it's the coordination bit. So I can understand the challenge that you face in that sense. But, but yeah, yeah my my husband puts it um, nicely. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm 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 talking about him like he's this great person. These are just snippets. I have to live with him, so it's a very different story. But no, um, he he often says to me, um you know what you're doing right now and he doesn't mean it like viciously but but it really puts it in perspective is, is giving people like a bottle of water what you need to do is dig a well yeah, yeah. and and i think that i think that because we're clinicians and uh, we're people with lived experience and and it doesn't always come naturally that that kind of okay so how do we make this bigger and i think there's some amazing people out there who who can do that straight away can't they they just oh, yeah. know it's amazing um, mind things like that. Can do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely so so um, yeah. if anyone is listening to this and they, they have those skills, <laughs> please we're get into it. We're calling all you business development salesmen out there that can work for a good, <laughs> good purpose. Um, to help. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, the, the, uh, Rukhveer, I wanted to probably touch um, on a few points around what helped you during that difficult time. Is there any tools or advice and tips you can give people who pay maybe feeling that they may have some mental um, health issues themselves or actually uh, a friend or family that they they may think what, what sort of things can they do to sort of manage that um yeah um so obviously the grieving is, is a process so allow yourself time to do that um uh, if you, especially if you've lost somebody um i found that talking to friends and family and just talking um, going for a walk in the park and just expressing my emotions, having a cry with people that you know and trust, um, you know, letting yourself sort of um, be at peace with what's happened. It does take time. Um, and uh, for others, others uh, Afan Gurbani, obviously, like you said, is a, is a, you know, the biggest source of um, um, knowledge and enlightenment and empowerment. Um, that we have, we have Sikhs are blessed with, um, and obviously Gurbani is for every anyone, um, not just us. So I think you know, don't be scared of going to the Gurdwara and asking for support. Um, and maybe you know, if you want to speak to Guruji, take a hook of Nama, tell the you know the, the Gyaniji or the, the priest there that you know I've got this problem. You know, I'm thinking these things. I need help. Um, can you take Okunama for me and just explain it to me? Mm. Um, and then also, I would say, you know, contact organizations um, um, which have experience uh, in mental health, such as like, you know, obviously us, the Seek Your Mind, um, and, uh, you know, just um, uh, get get some help and support, if, especially if you're, um, you've got symptoms such as which are prolonged, such as you are sort of feeling anxious, about things or you've got you know um you know disturbed sleep patterns or something or um you know you've relationship problems or lack of interest in things um and those kind of symptoms and and others um depending on the, on the condition that you might be experiencing uh, they're presenting yourself and they're preventing you from actually lead, leading your normal life your normal day-to-day -day activities um and you consistently feel these then i think it's a good thing to stop and think and, and you know reach out to somebody um, because you know it is something that you know we, we all need help with and we all we experience some kind of difficulty in our lives uh, depending on what happens it might be bereavement might be divorce might be moving house might be new job or something and a moving country you know it could be anything yes. um, so yeah I mean never be scared or sort of um, you know um, not sort of you know, I'd never be scared about doing that. Brilliant. And I guess, um, Prabhupada this is probably one for you where obviously this COVID-19 pandemic has affected everybody, both working, home, all sorts, and, and obviously there's a lot of loss of life that you may see more of because of your field of work and people dealing with isolation and all this stuff. Is there any tips that you can give people or any advice on where the help is available, what sort of services are available to them at this time? 
Absolutely, yes. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's a really challenging time for so many people, and, and even with the, the sort of brief, um, the, the bereavement and grief experiences, we're, we're not able to do that properly. We're not able to do that how we normally would. Um, and so it's important to like, keep connected to people. And, and I know that's easier said than done, especially when you're going through something like that. But I suppose it's it's having people around you that can check in on you, even if it's for a short duration. So it doesn't feel like it's impinging on your time or it's intruding, but just to make sure that you're, you're okay in, in terms of your everyday, like sleep and eat and, you know, um, the basic things, especially if you're grieving, you know, that's a very difficult time anyway, but particularly increasing at the moment. Um, I think in terms of support in, in Birmingham, I know that my, my, the trust that I work in offers a, um, a 24 hour mental health support line. And, and, and I'm sure and that's like a government initiative, really. So I'm, I'm really sure that actually most um, NHS trusts in the area, so if you just Google the area that you're in and NHS trust and mental health 24 hour line, um, there will be support available. Um, there's also, you know, if, if, if anybody wants support, particularly on something right now, feel free to email us because we can always find that support for you um, because it might be just too daunting to look at what's out there. So we can, you know, talk with you over email or over phone, um, whatever you prefer, really, to find find out what would what would suit you um, I think it's, it's it's important to remember that this is it is challenging and you, every every single person uh, it, w may experience some anxiety right now and that's normal I think we can look at it in a very clinical way sometimes like uh, there must be something wrong with me but actually we're not living in in a typical world right now um, you know we're not allowed to hug the people that most like the closest kind of family members to us and I know I I really miss some of the, my family who I've not really seen in, in sort of three months um, and so it's important to just kind of normalize some of that really um, I don't I don't think there's one strategy that fit all, fits all but I know there's a lot of support even mind um, you know massive charities like mind um, have, have a lot of support for general kind of mental health um, but we are we are always around to try and support people to find the exact support they're looking for and I guess the so how how do people how would people go about contacting yourself or getting information from Seek Your Mind? What are the avenues available? So if um, if everybody goes to the website, that's www.seekyourmind.com, and then there's a, a contact us form. Um, if they just fill that in, really, with some basic information about about them you know um if it does ask for a name you don't need to put your name if you want to leave it anonymous that's absolutely fine um if people prefer to contact to continue the contact over email that's okay as well i suppose it's just, it's just in in order for you to get the support that you need so whatever's easiest for some people they can't talk at home for a particular reason uh, and so email might be easier for others actually they need that telephone contact they need to speak to a human on the other end and and we understand that and for, um, so you support the Punjabi community, so I take it people can speak Punjabi as well. And for those people that don't have access to a website or they're not able to get in contact via that method, is there a way of traditionally getting in contact, a number or, or another, another way of... Yeah, that. That, that's something that we definitely need to work on because at the moment we don't have a telephone line particularly, so we all kind of call from our own phones, um, and so there isn't one number. But that's definitely something that hopefully in the next few months will become clearer. Um, I mean, at the moment, the, the Seat Council UK have a kind of COVID line. It's for helping people who are vulnerable, um, and I can give you those details shortly. Um, but essentially, the idea is um, they can support people with more practical issues so um emotional support so actually if somebody needed needed to speak to us needed more kind of um significant mental health intervention then that we are involved in that and then they would forward that call on to us so the number for that is o triple three two three zero zero one zero zero i'll put those details on the um the podcast episode as well um, so that people can access that. And if there's any other organizational links or um, information that you think is useful for people to digest offline or, you know, without contacting somebody just to find out about things, do send that to me and we'll get it onto all the platforms as well. Um, so I guess one of, the, one of the things I was quite keen on doing via this podcast was to give the younger generation or people looking to change careers, career guidance and understanding of different sort of areas of 
of the work that they could do. So I guess this is a bit twofold question. If somebody wanted to get into the healthcare sector and work as a clinician, how would they do that? And the other part is, if they wanted to um, be a part of Seek Your Mind, what are the different things that people can get involved in, you know, as well as uh, giving funding to help you sort of grow and do all that thing, all of those things as well. Um, what kind of, yeah, what kind of things can they get involved in? And if people wanted to get into the mental health career path, um, maybe a bit of insight on how they could go about doing that as well. Absolutely. Um, I mean, if anyone needs any support with like clinical applications because they're interested in becoming psychologists, then feel free to message us in any way that you can, Instagram, Facebook or email. Um, that there's, um, there's about five um, qualified psychologists and a couple of assistant psychologists um, in the team who would be more than um, happy to, to help with that. Um, it, it's, a, it's not a straight route to get into clinical psychology. Um, just because so you do your undergraduate, you do three years and then you do a one or two or sometimes more years of, of um, clinical work. So that could be it's so wide ranging. You could be a research assistant. You could be a health care support worker. So a care worker. You could work um, with with a particular population, children, people with learning disabilities, older adults. So it really varies. I think for me, it's, it's about what interests you. So actually, whatever you're doing. I know the end goal might be to get to X, you know, to be a psychologist or to be a mental health professional, but it's enjoying what you're doing. Um, and then after that, you have three years of a doctorate. Um, so, and then, and then the end or just the beginning really. Um, but I mean, there's, I mean, there's, so, I mean, we have a, a, a social worker in the team as well. So if anyone's out there who's interested in, in social work, that's something we can support with. Um, and a speech and language therapist, Rukfi's wife. Um, so we have quite a few clinicians, including a wellbeing coach as well. So it's really varied. Um, there isn't one, if you want, if you're interested in mental health, there's actually, um, there's so many roles that can fulfill that need okay. um, so we can definitely support people to think about what might that they might be interested in and and also what's realistic because actually even the, the psychology doctorate sometimes it's, it's a long journey and you might be able to achieve that in a different way if you're particularly interested in mental health support and and working with people to support them in that way um, and maybe Rukhi, you can say a bit more because i know you've been looking into this yourself yeah, that's right. Um, as a, a sort of a career change, because I'm quite passionate and it's one of the driving factors uh, for me to help uh, other people. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been looking at roles recently in the NHS, um, like a psychological wellbeing practitioner and uh, employment support as well, particularly the people who are, have mental health difficulty in helping them. Um, and so that's the reason for, you know, Gain some experience coming from like no experience so I've done a qualification uh, albeit so it's a, ba a very basic one but it gives you a good background on mental health um, so yeah it's uh, definitely good NHS is a great website as well um, yeah. is there any online courses that people can do just to sort of get familiar with mental health and see if it's going to be a profession that they want to get into or is it I think uh, Rukavi you said you did a course or something earlier yes yeah, so, so it's a um a course by the skills network which is free of charge so they send you the materials um textbooks and stuff and it's an online course so you can do it distance learning um and it's a it's a four-part course and it's a level two certificate in awareness of mental health problems which i did um and, and it's really good you you get like um assigned to a um a college or university and you have a support that way in terms of a tutor and somebody to mark your work and they give you good feedback. Uh, so I'd really recommend that. Um, it does cover a range of different mental health issues from like uh, stress, anxiety, the phobias, the depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, dementia, uh, eating disorders, um, ADHD, OCD, PTSD. So it just goes on and it's, uh, it's quite good. It's quite comprehensive and I really enjoyed doing it when I got time to do it, um, which was at night, like you and the MBA. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So it'd be good to get that link as well so we can share that with um, the listeners as well if, if any of them are interested in doing that free course. I think now is probably a good time for people to do that if they have more time on their hands because they're not traveling about much. So um, yeah. be good. So yeah, um, as it's Mental Health Awareness Week, and the theme is kindness. 
I think it'd be very nice to understand from your perspectives what you feel kindness is. Um, and I think it'd be good to share with the listeners and it kind of resonates with the purpose of the week to discuss the topic kindness. So who wants to go first? <laughs> Um, well, I can because I, I literally just posted Lady on um, our Instagram. I I <laughs> so um, this this week, as as you rightly say, we've all been doing a post on our um, Seek Your Mind Instagram about what what it means to us, and um, I'm becoming a lot more interested in um, like structural like oppression and racism and just organizational barriers really um and i suppose i i came across something that i thought gosh that's, that's really interesting because so i i normally think about kindness as as doing you know bringing my mom flowers or opening the door for a stranger or you know these small acts and I, and i'm nothing against them and they're still really valid but i suppose it's about thinking about how kindness can be about standing up for others um in in a world where you know it's unfortunately like hate crimes are increasing, you know, looking at this pandemic and the views against Chinese people at the moment, um, and, and as just one example, but you know, we know as Sikhs as well, our own communities have been, um, you know, really uh, uh, the victims in a lot of these um, incidents, unfortunately, as well, and, and historically and, and more recently. So I suppose kindness for me is about standing up for other people and and then particularly um, standing up for other people, even when it's really hard for you to do that, just because it feels so uncomfortable, just because no one else is doing it. Um, for me, that's what it means to be kind, to truly be kind. So that, that the small things that we do on an everyday, that's great, but we really need to feel it. We need to embrace Body it and we need it to, to be not not one of those it's like a fad it, you know it, it doesn't work yes. um, so, so these small bits of kindness hopefully form kind people kind people who then stand up for others and and i think there's very there's something so so clear in our history of sikhs about that but i think it's got lost along the way um for me i can say that for me it has because i, I do kind of tremble a little bit i think oh gosh there's something uncomfortable i'm not sure what to do with it um but i hope that you know that moving forward i can actually do that a bit more i can actually you know stand up for other people um even when it's not about me Increasing, so. right? Um, when I thought about kindness, I thought, well, what does it mean to me? Well, it means you know, um, asking how somebody is, or just um, you know, saying hi to the neighbour or something, or you know, um, just contacting a, a friend that you've never heard from before or something. Um, but it's much more than that. Um, it's a, a very a, a special quality to have, um, which allows you, I think, to feel good about yourself as well. Um, it does require a lot of courage and strength to be kind, especially to somebody who you may not know, you may feel uncomfortable talking to or contacting. Um, but it does require uh, courage and strength, I think. And, you know, just to be, uh, I think in, in this age where we live, there's a lot of social media, a lot of people, you know, their computers and stuff. I think it's good just to have a connection with the real world in the search. So, um, so just to be friendly, and generous to somebody um, and considerate um, in your everyday activities. Um, I think it adds up and it just makes you into um, a different person by, uh, in, you know, practicing that quality. Um, and then, you know, um, and it's a give and, uh, give and get thing as well, because if you, you know, if you don't you'd be kind to somebody, they're not mo most likely will not be kind to you. Uh, so it's a bit like respect. So you know, you give and you get that back as well. So it just adds up. And if everybody embodies it, um, it just creates a better society, a uh, community which is um, compassionate and listens and looks out for each, for each, for each other. Um, and I think that's really important, more so needed in this time as well. Definitely. Yeah, that's definitely relevant. That's really, really inspiring words. Um, so I guess, I guess I should have my go as well on what kindness is. <laughs> for me, kind of resonates on both your points i think definitely you have to have the courage to be kind to yourself first to understand that you know nobody's perfect but we are unique in ourselves and i think once you recognize the uniqueness in yourself it's much more easy to recognize in others as well it's not it's not it's not just an outer thing where you accept others but as an ultimate thing you need to be kind to yourself to be kind to others and, that, and i think uh Kubinaji, like you said there is there is this tougher side of kindness where you need to stand up for other people because 
we we're, we're obviously told to be the examples to lead by you know in society to be at the forefront and our gurus did the same and many others that followed them and they stood up for something that was right whether it gave up gave their, they gave their lives for it but they knew that they were standing up for something much bigger than just that that one action and i think that's what the difficulty is in today's age is to keep that in perspective and make sure <clears throat> even if it's uncomfortable you're doing something for the betterment of others and sometimes mm. I think it's seeing the bigger picture, um, but still acknowledging the smaller kindness factors of recognizing people. And I think in your post today was about uh, recognizing people that are there, you know, and, and checking in with them is, is and, and noticing a difference and having that engaging conversation. So I have a team, I've got quite a big team, but what I always say to the other managers is that it's the day-to-day -day smile, it's the day-to-day -day hello, it's the day-to-day -day noticing or oh, someone doesn't look right today or they didn't turn up to work and checking in when they return. It's very simple things, but those build and build and build and they build a happy team and a, and a team which yeah. will work, yeah. work, work, work well because you're looking after them. And they, like you said, Rakhavi, I'm surprised that you know the it comes back to you because they ask you actually are you okay today and you're like well yeah that's right <laughs> yeah. But, you know you feel it feels good because it's reciprocating what you want it what you want to project so you mm. get back so yeah a uh, yeah. for sure we're probably coming up to the time now so I think it'd be good to for you to have your final word and and ask um, what you need from support from the community from the wider community how can we help donate and what, what are your needs and sort of how can we help to raise this platform of mental health in the WNC community which is really needed um, for us to help those that are suffering in silence or they just don't they're not knowledgeable about what mental health is and what services are available over to you guys this is, a, this is your floor now. <laughs> Well, thank you, firstly, for inviting us on. This has been really, um, it, it's, it's always interesting when we have conversations with other people because I think something else comes to mind or there's like a spark somewhere. Um, and, and I've really appreciated that time today. So thank you. Um, I find it massively com uncomfortable to ask for donations, but I've been told I have to. So uh, <laughs> you, learn, you should learn um, from the big charities. <laughs> yeah, we are a charity and it, and it does all go um, to things that we we need to support people. Um, so if anybody does want to donate, they're, they're more than welcome to um, and they just go onto our website and there's a donate button and it takes you to pay, PayPal and you can get a receipt and everything from us. Um, what, what we're really interested in is, is communities and, and groups and initiatives inviting us in. Um, really so we can work together so we can kind of use all of our skill mix to help more people um, we are definitely as I said on the lookout for someone who can help us with fundraising and, and grant applications I think that's definitely uh, a necessary uh, kind of a move forward um, but and we're always looking to recruit I think at the moment it's on hold just because of, of COVID um, but we really value um, like recruit, like everybody brings such different expertise and, and we really are trying to think about, you know, if someone does come into our team, what is going to be your thing? How are you going to support this? Because you will get something out of it that's guaranteed. And hopefully you can give some of what, what skill you have. So that's our ideal, really, that we definitely want you to get something out of it, whether that's mental health, um, kind of clinical experience, if you will, or helping the Sikh population or helping pop people. We want you to have that. But we also want to think about what's the skill that you can help seek your mind um, with. So um, we're just really grateful for every opportunity, um, just like today, to really Really talk about what we do and and hopefully bring more passionate people on board increasing um well i'm i consider myself one of those passionate people so um yeah i mean echoing everything you said um please donate and help with uh, it is seva um and we are helping those that actually need help in the community um you know there are sort of frameworks uh, in the nhs which aren't as easy accessible to people um, from our community, as well as the Black Asian uh, and the minority ethnic communities. And um, we've seen that current pandemic where, you know, we have been disadvantaged and we have been unfairly, unfairly sort of disadvantaged. Um, um, so there needs to be sort of like, I think, uh, um, you know, community-led sort of a response to that. And um, that's where smaller charities, which specialize, who have more knowledge about um, you know, Asian uh, communities and um, to, you know, actually 
uh, be at the fore and join in with the national um, guidance on this. Uh, so yeah, please help support our work. Um, and if you are going through any issues yourselves uh, in terms of mental health, um, you know, please get in touch. And uh, you know, yeah, keep positive um, and uh, look after yourselves. Be be kind to yourselves, as you said. Um, and uh, yeah, just um, learn about, about mental health. Um, it's so easy to be ignorant um, and not worry about it if it's not a problem that you're experiencing or somebody isn't experiencing that you know. Um, but it's, it's good knowledge to have as well as physical health. We do a lot of workouts and stuff and you know, we like to look after ourselves. But mental health is key to good health at the end of the day. Um, so you've got to know how, what it means to have not so good mental health and how you can look after it. And it's really important to study about it and, you know, take part in initiatives and um, support, uh, support the work if you can't do anything else um, and have respect uh, for the people who do have mental health difficulties because they're not, um, you know, people who shouldn't be around. They should be respected and it's a difficulty that they're having. It's not something that that's, what, that's there and that's it. If they're going to recover from it and we should all play a part in being empathetic and listening to people um, and, you know, uh, looking out for each other. Um, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, like I said, like, thank you very much for having uh, us on as well. So appreciate it. It'd be nice talking to yourself and uh, hopefully we can sort of, you know, link again um, and obviously help spread the word. Brilliant. No, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure meeting you. It's been a pleasure having you on the, the episode. And um, I mean, I, I would welcome to, have another episode in the, in the near future with you and maybe we can talk about particular um, issues or topics that you know are at the forefront of what we need to sort of get out there but um yeah it's been amazing i'm sure our listeners are going to really appreciate this episode and 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 help raise awareness and support themselves as well so i just um i, I want, want all our listeners to follow you on instagram at the handle at seek your mind and also the website was www.seekyourmind.com and um, do spread the word. Well, thank you very much, Govinda Jeet Kaur and Shagiri Singh. Wai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa. Wai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa. Wai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Thank you for listening to the Seek Coach podcast. If you found this episode valuable, do share with your friends and family and do give us feedback. You can email us at theseekcoach at gmail.com or find us on Facebook just search The Seek Coach Podcast and follow us on Instagram at The Seek Coach thank you for listening stay blessed